An important reason that supply chain management has grown in strategic importance is that over the years, a larger and larger chunk of the activities that used to be carried out within the fold of a single organization have begun to get dispersed among several different players in the supply chain. Companies have increasingly started focusing on a relatively limited number of areas and outsourcing the rest. In the manufacturing sector, it is not unusual for upwards of 70% of the cost of a manufactured product to be purchased from suppliers. In the service sector, the numbers are not as high yet, but it is indisputable that the outsourcing bug has bitten. The decision of whether to perform an activity in-house or to outsource it is a make or buy decision. The more we make ourselves and the less we buy from others, the more vertically integrated we are. Backward integration is vertical integration towards the upstream end of the supply chain, while forward integration is towards the downstream end. Outsourcing, on the other hand, denotes taking an activity that is currently being performed in-house and moving it to a supplier. The term outsourcing is often used synonymously with offshoring, but really, outsourcing could even be to a supplier down the street. However, in this age of globalization, it is not uncommon to find a preponderance of offshore suppliers. Meanwhile, the term offshoring could mean relocating the company's own facilities abroad, or it could mean outsourcing to an offshore supplier. Let us say I am running a small business. Once in every so many days, I put all my bills, receipts, bank and credit card statements, etc. into a tote box and lug it to my accountant to get the numbers crunched. My business has grown over the years and I find myself sending more and more stuff over to my accountant. Looking at what he or she is charging me, I figure that it would actually be cheaper for me to hire a full-time in-house accountant. So I decide to integrate backwards and make rather than buy this accounting activity. Meanwhile, I usually contract with the XYZ delivery company to deliver my products to my customers. As my business has grown, I have noticed that every time I look out the window, I am likely to see a truck from the XYZ company at my loading dock. I figure it would be cheaper if I went out and bought my own truck and hired my own driver. So I decide to integrate forwards and make rather than buy this trucking activity. As you can see from these examples, an important motivation to increase the level of vertical integration tends to be the amount of activity. The smaller the volume of an activity, the greater the incentive to outsource it. Outsourcing an activity reduces my fixed costs, although my variable costs are going to be higher. On the other hand, the larger the volume of an activity, the greater the incentive to bring it in-house. Bringing an activity in-house means increasing my investment in fixed costs, but the benefit is expected in terms of reducing my variable costs. Thus, for smaller volumes, I prefer the low fixed cost, high variable cost approach, that is, buy. For higher volumes, I prefer the high fixed cost, low variable cost approach, that is, make. To determine the volume above which the make option becomes preferable, I can conduct a break-even analysis. At the break-even volume, Q, the total costs of the make and buy options are equal. Solving for Q, we can get the break-even volume. If the volume of my activity is below Q, then I will choose the buy option. If the volume is greater than Q, then I will choose the make option. Although the volume of an activity can be an important factor in determining whether to make or buy the activity, if the activity is not a core activity related to our business, it may still be worthwhile to outsource it. For example, 
say I buy a truck and hire a driver and produce in-house the delivery services I used to buy from the XYZ company. Unfortunately, I don't know much about trucks. Did you know they need an awful lot of maintenance? I keep taking it back to the dealership and they charge me an arm and a leg just for an oil change. Most importantly, this trucking business is eating up too much of my valuable time. I could be using that time to focus on increasing my business. Instead, I'm wasting my time crawling under a truck. Meanwhile, the XYZ company has its own garage and mechanics to service its fleet of trucks. If one breaks down or a driver falls ill, they can easily substitute another. And they don't need to keep as many spare parts on a per truck basis as I do. They are deriving the economies of scale. So I have an idea. I don't like the XYZ company's prices, but I don't want to do this trucking myself either. So I make a bold proposal to the XYZ company. I know my volumes are going to be such and such for this year. I will guarantee them that amount of business if they can guarantee me a lower price. So now we have a win-win situation. Rather than the typical make versus buy options, we have a third option that is more of a long-term partnership. They are doing more of what they are good at, and I am doing more of what I am good at. I am so pleased with this deal that I even offer to give them my truck for free. Just so glad to be rid of it.